and amen. Well, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. Well, it's an honor to be with you today. <laughs> yes. It's an exciting day today. Hallelujah. Amen. You ready to get started? All right. Amen, amen. Well, praise the Lord. Let's stand up together. Let's... Father, we thank you for this time today. We thank you for your word today. We thank you, Father, that your word will go forth in this place without any hindrances of any force of any kind. Holy Spirit, we lean on you. We trust you that you will lead us and guide us in all truth, that you will show us things to come. Father, I humble myself before your mighty hand, that you may exalt me in due time. Father, I cast all of my care upon you, for you care for me. Father, I break every demonic force that will work against our minds, our hearts, our will, our emotions. I loose it from its assignment now in the name of Jesus. And I release the perfect will of God right now over our lives. And God, I thank you and I praise you and I give you glory, Lord, for all that you've done and all that you're doing and all that you're going to do in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And Father, I ask you that you are known every ear to hear, prepare every heart to receive. Make my tongue as I'm a pen of a ready writer to write your word upon the heart and upon the mind of your people that they will know the truth and that the truth shall make them free. We covenant with you now to give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' mighty majestic name. Amen and amen. Well, welcome to a new life in Christ Jesus Church where Jesus Christ is glorified. Amen. Well, we're still dealing with the same message. Amen. Uh, that he said... In the book of Matthew, chapter 16, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. We still deal with this message. Amen. And I believe that, I believe that, I, I know that I have received, amen, a, 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 some, a lot of insight from it. Amen. And, uh, and I believe that God has ministered to my heart and strengthened me and, strength, and, and brought me closer to Him. Amen. And I believe that. When we come to understand who Christ is, and when we understand the knowledge and the revelation that comes by knowing Him, that we will all draw closer. We will all come to that place where we will see, know, and understand who He is. Amen. Glory to God. So I want to thank God for each and every one of you and for that are viewing us today, that are with us today. I know that we serve a God that is that is a good God. Amen. And we're going to continue along this line. We're going to believe that God will not allow his word to fall to the ground, but he will accomplish everything that he sent it out to do. <coughs> Amen. So let's open our Bibles right now and to the book of Matthew chapter 16. Amen. Can we just, can, I'm going I'm to start reading, amen, verse number 13, but then I'm going to back it up after I finish this, uh, after I finish my golden text today, I'm going to back it up. Because, you see, we're living in a time where God is looking for us to not only to discern the, the signs of the sky, but the time of the sign of the time, amen, that we're in. And the time that we're in is very crucial right now for the body of Christ to understand. Amen. So in verse number 13, it says, And when Jesus came to the coast of Caesar Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, and some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered, and said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Verse number 17. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah. For flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, and I say also unto thee, that upon this rock, thou art Peter, and upon this rock, 
I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Verse number 18, one more time. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Oh, glory to his name. Glory to his name. Amen. And I believe that God is, is speaking to our hearts, that he's letting us know that he's given us power over all the powers of the enemy. Amen. And he's saying that nothing shall by any means hurt us. God wants us to break through into a spiritual, he, want, he wants to break through into a, a spiritual awakening within us. Amen. To the revelation of his son Jesus. Who he is, not only who he is, but who, he, but who is he to you? Amen. Because see, this is the question that he's asking. Who is he to you? Is he just a man? Or is he some prophet that they talk about in the Bible? Who is he to you? Is he the true Messiah? The one that should surely come into the world. Amen. Who have come and is coming again. See, this is something that we have to answer ourselves. Because we're coming into that season, we're coming to that time that we're going to give an account for every deed done. Every idle word spoken. Every action that we've taken. And friend, let me tell you something. A lot of us is going to regret that moment. Because a lot of us have not honored God. We have not obeyed God. We have not walked with God as he have instructed us to. Amen. So we're going to, we're going to, that's, a, that's a price to pay. But I want you to understand what he said in, in uh, verse number 13 as he coming to the coast of Caesar Philippi. He asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I am? That I the son of man am? And at, at first they could not answer that question. Not one of them could answer that question at first. But he said, some say thou art John the Baptist, and some Elias, and others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But then when he made it personal, but whom say ye that I am? Whom say ye that I am? He made it personal. Oh, and, and can you imagine when someone asks you a personal question, a, 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 a question that's a direct question, I put it like this, a direct question, how you begin to uh, brainstorm, how you begin to uh, just just trying to figure out exactly what words you want to say so you won't give some kind of off-the-wall answer. Well, I can, I can understand what they was going through because I've been in that position before. But now here go Peter. Peter was just, just mumming over and going over and over in his heart. I believe that, that when, he, when he began to just believe that when that's when God opened up his understanding and poured into him, download into him, revelation knowledge of the Son of Man. And he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Oh, I feel this thing. And he said, Flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Amen. So we see that God <clears throat> is talking to those who believe, to those who understand, to those who are seeking to know him, to those that are following after him. God wants you to have the full account of his deity, of his purpose, and of his plan in the earth. He came not to save the saved of the Redeemed the saved because they was already well, but he came to save those which were, he came to those which were sick, to deliver them, to set them free. The Bible says in in First John chapter one, verse number eight, I think, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifest that He might do what? Destroy <coughs> the works of the devil. Amen. That he might destroy the works of the devil. And so what we see here, we see him doing exactly that. 
we see him doing exactly that. But notice, notice again, he said, he said, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Verse number 18. Amen. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Glory to God. Notice exactly what Jesus says to Peter right here. Because it's very important that we understand what he's saying to Peter. Amen. In the scripture. He said, upon this rock I will build my church. He did not say, Peter, upon your word, upon your name, I'm going to build my church. Upon your life, I'm going to build my church. And upon who you are, I'm going to build my church. That's not what he said at all. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church. To me, the rock is referring to revelation, knowledge. Amen. Some And the, 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 the Peter name means rock. It means a small stone. Amen. It means a, a small stone. Petra means a small stone. Then that Petra means a, a foundation of stone. Amen. So that word that Peter received from God, I believe Jesus looked upon it as a foundational stone. Amen. Foundation revelation. Amen. To build upon. To build upon. Amen. So now we see that after the, after after this has been established and he and he and he's giving everybody he, he's telling everybody that now it's time to go to work. <laughs> now it's time to go to work because why? Because he have just begun to establish his church. He had just begun to build his church. Amen. So now who's going to build the church? Is Peter going to build the church? No. Who's going to build the church? Those that come into the knowledge of who he is. Amen. It's going to be the one that establish in the church. Where is the church going to be established? Is this the building that we meet in? No. Amen. God doesn't dwell in building that is made with hand. Amen. So it's not the building that we that we have a service in. Amen. So what building is, is we what 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 building is, is he establishing? What church is he establishing? He's establishing the church in your heart. And in my heart. Amen. In your heart and in my heart. So we see here that God is calling us to come together. Amen. And begin to do the work that he's called. Well, what work did he call us to do? Since we're here in the book of Matthew, let's go to Matthew chapter 28. The last chapter. Amen. Matthew 28. Amen. Now notice what he says right here, verse number nineteen. See, he he already he already said, "Upon this rock I'm gonna build my church." Now he's given the apostles their assignment. He's given them their assignment now, and their assignment is not to go home, sit back, and relax, and watch God work. Yeah, God is going to work, but God's going to work how? He's going to work through you. He's going to work through you. He's going to work through me. He's going to establish his church. He's going to build his house through you and through me. How's he going to do that? We're going to become his mouthpieces. When? When we become born again. When we get saved. Amen. When we come to understand. When we come to the revelation of the knowledge of who Jesus is. Amen. Then we become the we, we become uh, uh, instruments in the hand of God to be used to establish his church. Amen. To build his church. Amen. So how are we going to do that? We're going to go to the book of Matthew. Book of Matthew chapter 28, verse number, verse number 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. This is how we're going to build a church. We're going to go ye and teach all nations. Teach them what? Amen. And he said, teach all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them, verse number 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Amen. So we're going to, the way you, the way God is going to build a church is through you and through me. Amen. We are born again, children of God. We have, we have an understanding, we have a revelation of the name of Jesus Christ of who he is. Amen. Amen. What was his purpose for coming? He came to save a wretch like you and me. He came to save, seek and save that which was lost. 
That was you and me. Amen. And now he's using us. He's calling us into the harvest field to go to work. He said the harvest is truly great, but the labors are few. Now that he, he, he revealed himself to you and to me, now he wants to reveal himself to the world. How? Through you and from, through me. Amen. We are his voice. We are his hands. We are his feet. We are his eyes. Amen. We are, and what, what, what he says, that's what we do. See, Jesus, he understood that very well. He didn't do nothing unless he saw his father do it first. He understood it very well. Amen. So God has given us the same commission, verse number, verse number 20. He said, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Amen. In these verses of scriptures, we see something extremely important that should answer the question of who is the minister or who is the Messiah, who is the one to carry the word. Amen. Jesus not only was a minister, but he was a, the Messiah. He was a he was the the, 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 the the living word manifested in the flesh. The Bible says in John chapter 1, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was the light, and the light was the life of men. Amen. And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Verse number 14 said, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So Jesus Christ is the living word. Amen. And when we and as we uh, uh, meditate upon his name, as we as we begin to seek out to, to understand who he is by studying his name through the scriptures, amen, seeing the lifestyle that he lived and what he accomplished, amen, that's going to cause that's going to cause and to alt an, an alteration in your heart. That's going to cause an alteration in your heart. It's going to cause you to begin to line up. It's going to cause you to begin to straighten out your life. It's going to cause you to begin to see yourself in a whole total different view. Amen. God is going to begin to reveal to you who you are through the study of who Christ is. Why? Because he abides in you. According to the word of God, John chapter 14, verse number 10. Amen. He abides in you. Glory to God. If he's abiding in you, then now you have, a, you have an obligation to understand who it is that's dwelling in you, who it is that's living in you. Glory to God. Amen. So when you come to that understanding, guess what, folks? You're going to find out that you thought that you was alone. You thought that you are fighting this battle all by yourself. And you're going to find out that, my friend, you're not alone. You're not alone. You're a long way from being alone. Amen. Why? Because God is with you. His word and his staff, they comfort you. He has prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemies. He has anointed you with oil. Amen. And your cup runneth over. Amen. Surely, there's some enemies going to come against you. But goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Amen. Glory to God. So don't be a, don't go, don't grow weary in well doing. Because in due season, you're going to reap if you faint not. Amen. There's an enemy that don't want the church to understand who they are. There's an enemy that, won't, that doesn't want you to understand that you've been given authority and power over him. Amen. But God wants you to know this. That he said, behold, I give unto you power. Who's he talking to? He's talking to you. And he's talking to me. He's talking to the church. Amen. But remember what he said in verse number 18 in, in, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. He said, and behold, I, that he said, and thou art Peter. And I say also to thee. That thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Then what he said, and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. The gates of hell should not prevail against it. So if God is saying that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church, and we be in the church, that means the gates of hell has no power to prevail over you and over me. Amen. Why? Because Jesus Christ is in us, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. He's in us, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I want you to, you just need to understand that because you see, right here in the book of Matthew, see, in, in the book of Matthew, he's, he's telling us, he said, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. And now he's giving us the assignment in, in Matthew chapter 28, verse number verse number 19. Go ye therefore and, and teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. 
Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Amen. So God is showing us exactly what we are to expect. See, you are, you, you may be asking how could, how could God ever use you? Amen. You might have been, you might have lived a life that was, that was so wretched, that was so, that was so, uh, uh, uh my God, vulgar. <laughs> You might be living a life that was so out of tune, out of touch, amen, with, with God and with and with the Word. But the moment you got saved, the moment you got saved, the Bible said you were translated from darkness to light. You were translated from darkness to light, amen. And then the Bible goes on to say in First Corinthians, in Second Corinthians chapter five, verse number seventeen, it said, "Old things are what are passed away. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new." Amen. All things have become new. So now that now that you are born again, child of God, the whole even though even though you might have lived a rough life, even though you must have been a, a a hell's angel, amen, working so working overtime for the devil. But the moment you got saved, the moment you became a born again child of God, your whole past became history. Amen. Why? Because God translated you out of darkness into His marvelous light, and now the. Now and, and now you have a brand new start because he said old things are passed away. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. Amen. And all things are of God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So now, so now I can understand what he said that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church. Why? Because now I'm understanding what he's saying to me. Thou art Larry, and upon this revelation, I will upon this knowledge, I will build my church. Amen. So how do, how do I get, how do I receive this knowledge? I received it by acknowledging Jesus Christ first as my Lord and Savior. I received it first by, 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 by making a decision to repent and turn away from my sin. Amen. Glory to God. Now, how did that happen? Because, because someone took God at his word when he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. I heard the gospel preached. I received what was being said. I believed what was being said. And therefore, I was transformed. I was changed. I was born again. How did it happen? I became the part of the church. I became part of the church. And the same will happen for you. The same, the same way you became part of the church it's the same way God wants others to become part of church when you share your testimony, when you share what you understand, when you share what you know about the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's done for you. They want to hear your testimony. So you need a good testimony. How you overcome. Amen. Some of you might have been at the point of death. Amen. Somebody, some of you might have, might, have, might have been told by the doctor that you had cancer. Amen. And then all of a sudden, you went to call on the name of the Lord, or you went to pray, and you went to seek the face of the Lord, then all of a sudden, that cancer that was found in your body was gone when you went back for the second visit. How do you know that? I'm one of them. I am one of them. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So when the devil comes after you, amen, when the devil comes after you one way, and if you, and you turn your heart to the Lord, the Holy Spirit is going to raise up a standard. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid, glory to God. God is with you. His word and his stamp, they will come for you. He have prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemy. He have anointed your head with oil, your cup runneth over, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, how, why, how that's going to happen? Because you're you, because you're part of the church. You are a church. Amen. You're a member of of the body of Christ. That means you are a member of God's church. Amen. How did it happen? You believe the gospel. You received the gospel. You acted upon the gospel. Amen. And you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. What happened then? You was translated. The Bible says in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 9 it said, now he calls you what? Uh, he said now that you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Amen. See, God knows exactly who you are. He knows exactly what you've gone through in life. He knows exactly how the enemy has tried to destroy you. He knows exactly how the enemy has placed this curse, this, this disease, this cancer, this uh, this sickness upon your body. And he knows that if you don't, uh, if you don't uh, come to the reality of who Christ is, he knows that 
he know that somebody is going to pay for it. And I'd rather for the devil to pay for it. Because when the doctor told me I had cancer, I wasn't, I, I, said, doc, I said, Lord, this doctor just lied on me. <laughs> this doctor just lied on me. And, and, I, and, and I didn't tell my wife about it. I didn't tell no one about it. I just went in prayer. I just started praying. I just started talking to my father. And I was talking to God. And I was talking to the devil about what was said over me. And I said, I don't, I don't accept it. I don't receive that. And in the name of Jesus, I rebuke it. I cast it down. I cast those words down right now. I don't give life to those words. I cast those words down right now in the name of Jesus. Because sometimes when you let, when you, when you give life to those words that is spoken over you, when you give life to those words that is spoken over you, sometimes it just is it, harder to get rid of. Just like when you first start catching a cold or uh, flu or something, and if, when you notice it from the beginning, you start exercising authority, or you start casting it down, you start you start coming against, you start taking a stand against it, then all of a sudden, you're going to find out that that thing just left you right alone. Why? Because you wouldn't allow it to continue. Amen? How, why, how did you not allow it? You began to stand up against it. You took a stand against it, and it went somewhere else. Amen? And that's the same way about that cancer, what happened to me. That's the same way that happened to me about that cancer that the, that the doctor had found in my body. Amen? And I, and, and I said, I went and told God. I said, God, that doctor just lied on me. He said, I have cancer. And that ain't what your word said. Your word said that you can't let me have life and that I may have more abundantly. Amen. You sent your word and you healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Well, God, I'm one of them that you sent your word to. Amen. And I don't accept that. See, I'm, I'm part of the, I'm part of the, I, I, I'm part of the church. I'm part of the church. I am part of the house that God has built. I am part of the church that God has established. And so are you. So are you. You have more power over that sickness, over that disease that is in your body, that is, that is working against you, than you have this by, over anything else. Why? Because that body belongs to you. God gave that body to you. And, he, and you are the keeper of that body. You are the keeper of that body. Amen. Glory to God. And the church is, is established in that body. So if the church is established in that body, then there shouldn't be no sickness in that body. So you need to take a stand against that. You need to take a stand, a bold stand. And you need to stand firm and know that God is with you. That his word and his spirit, they comfort you. That he prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemy. That he's anointed your head with oil. Amen. And that your cup runneth over. Glory to God. You need to understand that. Why? Because God is working. God is at work right now bringing you to a place of, of hope. Bringing you to a place of peace. Bring you to a place of of, of, of of joy. Amen. Amen. And contentment. How that's going to happen? Oh my God, you just you just need to you just need to understand what God is doing. Because God is not a man that he should lie. Nor a son of man he should repent. Amen. See, when God said, Upon this rock I'll build my church, he said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. As you preach the gospel, what's happening? The church has been established. Where? In the heart of men throughout the earth. In the heart of men throughout the earth. What, what, how, how, how are they hearing it? What are you saying to them that cause them to receive the gospel? Well, there's plenty out there that are sick. Plenty out there that, that have been, that have been uh, uh, overtaken with demonic influence. Amen. And there's plenty out there that just confused. Amen. And so when you come with the truth of the gospel, you come with, you come with liberty. You come to liberate them. You come to set them free. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest. Amen. To destroy the works of the devil. Glory to God. And friend, I want you to know that God did not leave you without a purpose. When he gave, when you had invited him into your heart, you became a born again child of God, you received a purpose. And your purpose is to be the light of the world. The light that's shining in darkness cannot be hid. Amen. Amen. So let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. And I'll just and this is this is just this is just me talking right here, but the, the Holy Spirit is, is, is letting us know some things right here. Now let's look at the book of Mark, chapter 16. Amen. Because remember, remember, all, all, all the all the New Testament, all, all the, the four gospels, they, they 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 tell similar stories. Amen. See, when God said to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel, amen, he backed it up again in the book of Mark. In the book of Mark, chapter 16. So let's look at in Mark chapter 16. Amen. In Mark chapter 16. Amen. Because you see, he, he didn't tell us go to and sit down and relax. It's time to go to work. When you get born again, when you can, when you become a child of God, amen, it's time, it's time to be about your father's business. It's time to go to work. And the book of Mark chapter 16, 
Amen. Chapter 16. Let's start reading verse number 14. He said, after, after he appeared unto them, after he appeared to the eleven, as they had said in me, he upbraided them because he upbraided them with their unbelief. See, even when he had died, when he rose up, when he rose again from the dead, amen, the people still did not believe. His, his own followers, those that trusted him, those that walked with him, did not believe that he was risen from the dead. They found they found it hard to believe. So we see that he, he came and kind of he gave them a mild rebuke because of their unbelief right here in Mark chapter 16, verse number 14. Amen. Let's read it again. And afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they said at me and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because, there it is, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Amen. After he was risen. Now verse number 15 He's now, now that he's upbraided them, now he's giving them, he's giving them instructions. He's telling them to go and build my church. Amen. No, this is how he's telling them. Look at verse number 15. Verse number 15 says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. Verse number 16. He that believeth and baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Amen. And these signs shall follow them. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. So now, in this, in this last, in this, in this last case, in this last, in this, in this chapter, this last chapter of the book of, of Luke, we see Jesus appears to his disciples after his, uh, after he's already risen from the dead. Jesus upbraided them, means that he, in, uh, he, re, re, he is reproving them because of, and rebuking them because of their unbelief. Because they did not believe that he was raised, because he, they didn't believe he had raised from the dead. They, in their hardness of heart, amen. So Jesus, he, he's showing up, he's showing up, and he's showing himself alive to these disciples. But notice what he said unto them, verse number 16, verse number 15, I mean. And he said unto them, this is Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. But what is the gospel? Amen. The gospel we call good news. We call gospel good news. Amen. So he preaching good news of the gospel. Amen. And he's bringing, and he's bringing all of us into the knowledge of who we are through this good news. Amen. How does that happen? How is he bringing us to the knowledge of who we are through this good news? Because they are preaching the message of salvation. Amen. They are preaching the message of salvation. And they are showing the people that the way of life is in Christ, not the way of the world. Oh my God, no. I've been there, I've done it, didn't like it. it. The world tried to destroy me, amen. But when I understood what was going on, I turned my heart toward him. And he came into my heart, amen. He came into my heart. When did he come to my heart? When I invited him. He, even though he was always there, but he wasn't in my heart because I, I, I hadn't invited him. He's not going to force his way into my heart, but if I invite him into my heart, he's going to come into my heart. And so he came into my heart, folks. He came into my heart, and he wants to come into your heart, too. He wants to, he wants to come into your heart, too. Amen. He, and he wants you to experience the new life that's in Christ Jesus. He wants, you to, he wants you to be the church he created you to be. Amen. He wants you to understand that old things are passed away. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. He wants you to know that old things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. He don't want you to turn back to that old lifestyle, amen, that old sinful nature. It's just like a dog turning to his own vomit, amen. Glory to God. How can you take a hold of the gospel plow and, turn and look back? You're not fit for the kingdom of heaven, the Bible says. You're not fit for the kingdom of heaven. So we have to hold fast to the profession of our faith. We got to keep pressing forward. We got to keep pressing forward. We got to keep pressing forward. Why? Because if we look back, if we look back, then we might, he might try to bring up our past. He might try to bring up how we used to be, how we used to live, how we used to act. Then all of a sudden, he said, well, I want to try that again. Why do you want to think like that? Because you're looking back. That's what makes you want to think like that. Stop looking back. You won't think like that. Keep your eyes focused on the things which are before you. Amen. Looking unto him who have already run the race. Amen. For he is the author and finish of our faith. Glory to God. Looking back. Oh my God. You don't want to look back. There's danger in looking back. There's, 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 oh my God. There's trouble in looking back. Don't look back. 
Remember what he said in 5.17, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, <clears throat> the Bible said that he's what? A new creature. A new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things become new. All things become new. Glory to God. We don't want to look back. We don't want to, we don't want to remember our past. Even though you go around, sometimes you, you, you talk to family members, you talk to friends, you talk to people that you grew up with. They, they, they know you. They said, I remember you when. Amen. I know what, I know what you did back then, you know. And, and, and that's all they can see. So why do you want to hang around people that the only thing they can see is what you did or what you said or what happened in your young, dumb youth age when you didn't know nothing about life? Amen? So why do you want to hang around those type of people? Get around people that's going to encourage you. Hang around people that's going to, that's going to help you to understand that you are more than a comfort. Hang around the people that will cause you to see yourself as uh, uh, as the, the light of the world. Hang around those type of people that will cause you to see yourself as the voice of him that cried in the wilderness. Make straight the path of the Lord. Amen. Hang around this type of people that's going to cause you to, to that's going to cause you to rise up. Amen. From that mud and that moral clay. Amen. Don't be like the prodigal son down in that down there eating the the husk that the swine did eat. Amen. Don't wait till you get to the bottom before you begin to realize that, oh God, I had it made. Realize that you have it made right now in Christ Jesus because it's in him you live. It's in him that you move and it's in him that you have your being. It's not in what you did in the past. It's what's going on in your life right now. What count? God is calling us. God has gifted us. God has empowered us. To be the church. Amen. That the gates of hell will not be able to prevail against it. Behold, I give unto you the keys of the kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound on heaven, on, in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen. God has given us everything that we need to maintain and to keep this church going in the right direction. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when Jesus came to his disciples and they didn't believe that he was risen from the dead, I, I can imagine what he felt in his heart. Amen. He done taught them, been with them all this time, and he told them exactly what to expect. And then when it happened, they didn't, they, 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 they didn't believe it from them that had seen him. So he rebuked them. He rebuked them. Amen. Why did he rebuke them? Because they believed not on them who have seen him. Amen. And if they didn't believe on them that had seen him, they didn't believe that he had risen. They had doubt in their heart. They had unbelief in their heart. Amen. You can't do the work of God that God has called you to do with unbelief in your heart. You can't do it. Amen. Because you, you're playing on the enemy's territory. You're playing on the enemy's playground. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 16, verse number 15 again, he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Why? Because the people asked him, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And Jesus, and, and, and they said, well, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some say Elijah, some say Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But he said to them, but whom say ye that I am? Amen. This is how they're going to realize who he is. This is how they're going to come to know who he is. When we preach the gospel, where we carry the gospel and preach it to all nations. Amen. This is how they're going to come to realize who he is. This is how they're going to come to know who he is. And it's the same way that we came to know who he is. Amen. He doesn't say to go home and, and get it, get your recliner. <laughs> no, he said go ye to all the world. But you know what, Pastor? I don't think I want to be responsible for, 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 for anyone else going to heaven. I just, I just want to make sure that I go to heaven, that my family gets saved, and, and I, want, I don't want to be responsible for nobody else, just for me and my family. Amen. Well, that's the wrong attitude. That's the wrong attitude. Amen. That's being selfish. God has, God has granted you eternal life. He has granted you eternal life, and he gave you the ability to share and to, and to, and to help others to come to understand, to come to the same knowledge. And now you don't want to share it. Amen.
No. God said go. It ain't, it's not time to sit back and relax. Amen. It's time to get up and go to work. It's time to go to work. It was not a request. It was a command. It was a command. It was not a request. It was a command. He commanded us to go into all the world. He commanded us to preach the gospel to every creature. He commanded us. It wasn't just a simple request. He commanded us. That's a command. Go ye. That's a command. Go ye into all the world. Amen. Glory to God. Regardless whether you want to be responsible for others or not, you, you are responsible. You are responsible. Why? Because you have accepted the call. You have accepted the, uh, the Lord Jesus. You have received him in your heart. Amen. Glory to God. Now look what it says in verse number 16 again. Mark chapter 16, verse 16. He that believe it and is baptized shall be saved. He that believe it not shall be damned. See, it's not your job to, 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 to get them saved. It's your job to share the message. And it's their job to believe the message. Amen. And as they believe the message, or they believe it or don't believe it, it's, you, you, have, you, have, you have poured out your heart. Amen. Their blood is no longer required to, to your hands. Amen. Because you, have, because you have poured out your heart. You poured out your heart. Amen. And now you're free from that particular individual. But there's many more. There's many more that you're going to have the opportunity to share with. Amen. The word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. So now, so now we see here, we see here that he said to us, amen, verse number 16 said, he that believe in the baptized shall be saved, he that believe not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Amen. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Glory to God. Glory to God. See, verse number 17 is a very powerful scripture. Very powerful scripture. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Glory. Amen. That's when you begin to allow the nature and the character of Christ to flow through you. What, what do you mean? The giftings that you have been given and the attributes of Christ that have become, that have come, oh my God, to begin to surface on the inside of you. Amen. Why? How's all this happening? Because the Bible said that you abide in him and he abides in you. And if, if this is true, which I know it is because the Bible says it. Amen. Now, if this is true, now you that you 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 in the right position. You, you, are, you are set in the right position by the Spirit of God to bring about one of the greatest manifestations that that person will ever see. Why? Because you know the truth. The Word of God is living on the inside of you and is bringing you to a place where you can share the good news of the gospel. Hallelujah. Now I like that because you see, now, because he said, what he said in 1 John 1 8, Amen. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. And he said in, verse, in, in, in Mark chapter 16, verse number, fifth, verse number 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. What is the first sign? What is the first sign that's going to follow the believer? That they can cast out devils. They can cast out devils. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. They can cast out devils. Amen. And then, see, now this is one of the things that this is one of the things that you don't see much in the church today. Amen. People come into church with demons and they walk out of church with demons. You don't see no one being set free no more these days. Back when I was growing up and when I was going to church, man, we used to see people being set free from demonic spirits everywhere you go, everywhere you look around. Amen. God wants to set the captives free today. Today is a day of salvation. Amen. Today is the day of your deliverance. I remember when I first started dating my wife. <laughs> my God. When we wasn't even really dating. We were just ministering as a team, going back and forth, ministering as a team. Well, she was, she was discipling some women, amen, and one of her disciples 
called her and asked her if she'd come over and pray for her because she was going through some things. And so she, she didn't want to go into that neighborhood by herself. So she called me and asked me, would I go with her to that particular house? I said, yeah, but I'm going to, I'm going to, see, we wasn't even riding in the same car back that day. We were, we were just, we were, we rode out separate vehicles, amen, and uh, we were just, just friends. But uh, she asked me to come and go with her to that house because she was, didn't want to go by herself in the neighborhood that, that she was asking, that she was asked to come to. And so I said, I'll meet you there, give me an address. And I put it in the GPS and I met her there, amen. And so we, I, she, she arrived there, then she waited on me, and then when I arrived, then we got out of our vehicles, amen, we went into the house, and we, uh, we, she started ministering to her, to her disciple, this woman, amen. And then she prayed for this woman, and then after she done prayed for the woman, she, she said, she said um, Minister Larry, would you like to pray for her? I said, sure, I'll pray for her too, no problem. Yeah, it's your disciple, but I'll pray for her, I don't have a problem praying for her. Amen. And I started praying for this woman. Then all of a sudden, this woman flopped down on the floor like a wet mop. Amen. And started scooting. And, 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 and said, I know you. You are a holy man of God. <laughs> Amen. And, uh, and I said, in the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of her now in Jesus' name. I bind you, devil, in the name of Jesus. I command you, loose her and let her go. Oh, my God. We had a, we we got this woman set free in just a matter of time. My wife she was shocked because she had never seen anyone being set free before. Amen. And uh, and and see that and this this is what I do. <laughs> That's what I that I get people set free. Amen. And so and so it was a, it was a powerful word. It was a powerful word. Now how did that happen? How did it happen? It happened because I understand who Christ is. Remember what he said. Verse number 18, Matthew chapter 6, verse 18. And I say also unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. See, you don't have to be afraid of no devil. You don't have to be afraid of no demon. All God is looking for is someone that will stand on the word and carry out the assignment. God said in Mark chapter 16, verse number 20, that he will confirm the word with signs following. God said he would confirm the word with sign Father. We don't have to confirm the word. That's God's business. Amen. Our job is to preach the word. Our job is to, is to, is to follow the examples that have been given us in the word. And it's God's job to confirm the word. Amen. It's God's, that's God's job. Amen. So as we, as we preach the word and as, we, and as we go forward and as we declare what God is saying, God confirms his word. God confirms his word. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So he tell us what to do. He tell us, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Well, what's happening? The church is being established and the gates of hell is, 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 is falling down. The gates of hell is crumbling when the church began to take their position, when the church began to take a stand, when the church began to understand the authority and the power that God has given them, that's when the gates of hell begin to fall down because the children of God is arising. That giant, that sleeping giant, that, 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 that the church, the sleeping giant, all of a sudden begin to come into the knowledge and the reality of the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ that's dwelling in them and working in them and through them to bring about one of the greatest manifestations of the kingdom of God that the world has ever seen. Amen. Revival is about to break loose in this land, throughout the land. It's breaking loose throughout the land. Why? Because of people coming to the knowledge of who Jesus is. People are coming to the knowledge of who Jesus is and the word of God is being established in the heart of men and church is being established in the heart of men because of the word's sake. Because of the word's sake. We are his church. The building is just a place where we come together. God doesn't dwell in buildings that it was made with hands. These buildings that we are coming together in was made by hands. The hand of man. God dwells in a building that's not, that, that, that's not made by hand. Amen. Glory to God. And what building is that? That's you and that's me. Hallelujah. That's you and that's me. And as, we, and as we come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, as we begin to acknowledge him as our Lord and Savior, as we begin to repent of our sins, as we begin to turn from our wicked ways, then we come to the realization that I don't believe I live like that. 
I just can't, you know, when you come to the knowledge of who Christ is, it makes you look at your life in a whole brand new perspective. And it makes you wonder, how did I ever live like that? How did I ever be that way? Amen? How could I allow myself to, to be pulled in such, in such a direction that will cause me to want to harm myself? Because that's what the devil do. The Bible said in John chapter 10, verse 10, he said, The thief come not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He said, But I come that you may have life, and that you may have it more abundantly. Glory to God. I want to encourage you today because I know that we are in a place right now that we have to begin to discern the signs of the time, not just, not just the, the, the skies, not just the signs of the sky, but the signs of the time. Amen. Let's go back now. Let's look at the uh, book of Matthew once again. Book of Matthew again, once again. Let's look at chapter, chapter, uh, uh, chapter 16 once again. But this time, let's, look at, let's look, go back up at verse number 1. Let's start with verse number 1. He said, And the Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempted him, desired, desired that he would, desired that he would uh, show them a sign from heaven. Verse number 2. And he answered and said unto them, When it is even, ye say, it is fair weather, for the sky is red. Amen. Verse number 3. And in the morning it will be foul weather, Today, for the sky is red and glory. O ye hypocrites, knows what Jesus said to these people? He's called them hypocrites because they they looking for signs. And how many people you know today is looking for signs? Well, I I won't believe unless you show me this sign. No, nobody said right here. Verse number three, Amen. And in the, this is Matthew chapter sixteen, verse number three, Amen. And in the morning it will be foul weather today. For the sky is red and lowering. O oh, ye hypocrites, ye can discern, note what he said, the face of the sky, but ye cannot discern the signs of the time. Amen. And this is the whole purpose that I believe that God wants this message preached. Amen. Because we're coming to a, a season where we need to be able to discern the signs of the time that we're in. Amen. And it's time for the church to come forth under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, empowered to tear, to, to, to drive out demonic spirits, to set the captive free, because God, that's going to be, that, that's going to be, well, this is going to be one of the greatest revivals that the world has ever seen. Amen. This revival fire is already beginning to break loose in the earth. It's already beginning to break loose in the earth. And God is giving us He's given us the tools. He's given us the, 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 the equipment. And he's empowered us. He's have, and he's have instructed us. And he, and let me tell you something. Whether you believe in yourself or not, God believes in you. I'm going to say that again. Whether you believe in yourself or not, God believes in you. He believes that what he has given you, he believes that what he has imparted into you, he believes that, that he's able to cause you to be the man or the woman he created you to be from the foundation of the world. He believes that you are uh, uh, that you are an overcomer, that you overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of your testimony. He believes that great is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He believes that you are that you've been given the power, amen, amen, to 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 to, to walk. And not faint. Glory to God. Amen. And he believed that he said in John chapter 14, verse number 12, said, The work that I do shall you do also, and great work these shall you do, because I go to the Father. You see, he believed in you. Whether you believe in yourself or not, it's up, I don't know. <clears throat> but I know one thing that God believes in you. He believes in you. Now it's about time for you to start believing in yourself. Amen. It's about time for you to start believing in yourself. Because the moment you begin to believe in yourself, that's the moment you're going to begin to break free <coughs> from this demonic oppression, from the demonic influence. The moment you begin to believe in yourself, you, oh my God, your whole life is going to just change. Why? Because you're no longer self-centered. You're no longer focused on I this and I that and I mean this and me that. Amen. You begin to see the big picture of the thing. And the moment you begin to see the big picture, you're going to see that God has never left you. He's never left you alone. And he's been waiting on you to make the right decision, the right choice. Amen. 
He believes in you. Glory to God. Glory to God. So he said right in verse number, verse number three, once again, Matthew chapter 16, verse number three. And in the morning, this, it, it would be foul weather for the sky, for the sky is red and lowering. Are ye, O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but ye cannot discern the signs of the time. And those were said verse number four. Verse number four says, Ha ha ha, ba A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he left them and departed. Amen. See, there are people that are looking for these different signs, but they need to be looking at they need to be looking at their life and need to, be, need to try to bring their life into alignment with the with God. Amen. But Pastor, who you talk to? I'm talking to all of us. We need to be bringing our life into the alignment with God so that our lives can make a difference. Amen. You are in this world, but you're not of this world. Amen. You, you, you just, you just passing through. You just here for a, a period of time. Amen. You just like a, you just like the flower of the grass. Amen. Right now you're here. Right now you're here. But when the sun comes out, that flower is going to wither away. Amen. You are being given. The opportunity of a lifetime. What's the opportunity you refer to, Pastor Larry? You were given the opportunity to be the priest that God called you to be. <coughs> You've been given the opportunity to be the, to be the light that God created you to be. You've been given the opportunity to be the voice that God created you to be. Well, what are you talking about, Pastor Larry? When Jesus said, who do men say that I am? Then someone had given an account for who he was. Who, that, who was it that gave an account? The one that was the one that was most outspoken of all the disciples, he was the outspoken one, and he was the one that God dealt with when it came to exposing who Jesus was. When Jesus asked his disciples, who the men say that I am? Everyone else, they try to figure out, well, I don't know, some say that you are John the Baptist, and, and some Elias, and others, Jeremiah, what other the problem? But, you know, I don't really know who you are. They don't know who you are. He said, but who do you say that I am? And, and all of a sudden, they just got completely quiet because of, I don't want to get the wrong answer, you know. <laughs> he might, he, I don't want him to think that, I, I, I'm not going to say nothing because I don't want to get the wrong answer. But see, get, just think, just think, just think about that. Then all of a sudden, Peter received a revelation straight from the Father above. And he said, I, 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 master, I, I know who you are, master, master, I know you. He said, you are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. And Jesus in reply, Jesus replied to him and said, and answered and said unto him, Sam, uh, 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 Simon by Jonah, flesh and blood did not reveal it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Amen. But my Father which is in heaven. Glory to God. Glory to God. See, we have to come to that same understanding. We have to come to that same knowledge. God, we need to know who you are. We, the church of the of the of this. This time, uh, this time in age, need to know who you are. Amen. Because we realize that you say that you are the Christ, but help us to understand who you are. Not to just say who you are, but to understand who you are. Because with knowledge come power. Anyone can say who you are, but do they have a Revelation of who you are. Because with that revelation, there is the power to stand in that name. Or on that name. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Glory to God. God is calling us, folks. He's calling us to understand who we are. He's calling us to understand who Jesus is. And he's called us to be the light of the world. He called us to understand that we've been given a, a, a job to go into all the world and to raise the church, to establish the church. 
You're not the one that established church. It's the knowledge that God has given you that's established church. You preach it. They hear it. They believe it. They accept it. And therefore, another church has been established. Where? In the heart of those that believe. You are the voice. You are his hands. You are his feet. You are the one that God is going to use to establish church. He never told you that go. And when Peter said, you are Christ, the son of the living God. He said, okay, Peter, that's good. Now you go sit down and rest. And I'm going to be in my church. That's not what he said. No, that's not what he said. You look at the Bible right here in Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Amen. It'll tell you exactly what he said. Amen. Are you looking also in the book of Matthew chapter 28? Let's look at, look at Matthew 28 first. Then we go to 16. Matthew 28, verse number 18. See, he didn't already, he, Peter didn't already said who you are. Now, J Jesus didn't tell him to go rest. He didn't tell him to go get you a lazy boy chair now. I'm going to build my church. No. Jesus said to them, go. Go. Who's he talking to? He talked to them that believe in his name. He talked to them that, that acknowledge him. Knows what he said. Go. <clears throat> verse number 18. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now notice verse number 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Amen. See, this is what I, this is our commission, folks. This is our this is a command straight from God. This is not something we take lightly. This is something that we receive as children of God. And this is something we honor God with by going into all the world and preaching the gospel, just sharing the good news. Delivering, getting the people delivered, getting the people set free. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. Oh, hallelujah. And God is looking at us. God is taking notes of us. He's watching us. He's seeing how we're going to approach this thing and how we're going to react toward this thing. God is giving us, oh my God, he's given us a whole year to figure this thing out. A whole year to figure this thing out. Amen. We're coming out to the last few months of the year. And I'm believing these last few months of the year, God's going to pour out of his spirit. God's going to pour out of his spirit revelation knowledge that's going to cause your heart to be, oh my God, to become enlightened to who you are. You got to come to this knowledge of who you are because you are coming to a season. You're coming into a season where you got to understand the signs of the time, not just the signs of the sky. You come into this season, you got to understand the signs of the time. And you got to be ready to do whatever God placed on your heart to do. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. So now, so now, so we see he said, teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And he said, Lord, I'm with you always. He didn't say he's going to leave you. He said, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you. Always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Now let's look at the book of Mark. Mark chapter 16. We see it again. What God is telling us. He's commanded us to take this gospel. He commanded us to go to preach the gospel. He didn't tell us to go somewhere and sit down. He commanded us to go preach the gospel. Look at verse number 14. After when he appeared unto the eleven, as they said at me, and abraded them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And how many of the people left around us today still that, well, I don't know if that, I, it, it, I, I, he's, just a, he's just a prophet. He's just uh, someone. He, he ain't nothing. He, he's no special, nothing special about him. He's just like all the rest of them. No, he, he's more than just the rest of them. He's the son of God. He is the son of God. He's not like the rest of them. Amen. He was not conceived by man. He was conceived by the spirit of man. By the spirit of God. Now he was born of a virgin. Not of a woman that had given birth to five different other children. He was born of a virgin that had never been touched by a man. But how do you know you was? I don't have. I believe it. <laughs> I believe it. Amen. And that settles it. You just got to come to the point to believe what God has said, and you got to accept what God has said, and you got to honor what God has said with all your heart, with all your heart. 
<clears throat> Amen. Glory to God. God has given us everything that we need to carry out the assignment. But are you willing to go forward and to declare what God has said? Amen. It's a, it's a job. It really is. It's a job. Amen. But somebody has to do it. Amen. And then that, that third place. Amen. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. I want you to look right now in, in Luke chapter 24, verse number 46. Luke 24, verse 46. Because we see we see in, in Matthew, we see in Mark, amen. In the book of in the book of Luke, verse number 46, it says, And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoove Christ to have su to suffer, and to write and to raise to raise from the dead, rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and remission of sin, and that re oh my God, let me let me read that again. Verse number verse number twenty forty first number forty seven. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in His name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witness of these things. Verse number forty nine. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Now, there it is right there, folks. He sent the promise. Well, what do you mean he sent the promise? He sent the power for you to carry out the assignment. What assignment? To show the world the revelation of who Christ is. Instead of them asking and you not knowing you come to the revelation. You begin to experience the, the power. And you go and share it with those around you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Preach the gospel. Convince people to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And be saved. Amen. Tell them about Jesus Christ and what he did for you. What did he do for you? Do any of you have a good testimony of what he did for you? Amen. If you do, then that is a good place to start. That is a good place to start. What have he done for you? I know what he done for me. I, I, when I was a young man, I lived a, a bad life, and I, was, I, I became so sick. Everywhere I looked around, I'm, I'm in a lot of pain. My, I, I, every time I look, I, I mean, so much pain. Pain every, everywhere, every day, every day, crying, 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 crying. And I remember God called me to preach and I was in that condition and I'm standing up preaching and my stomach was hurting like I don't know what while I'm preaching. I'm holding my stomach and preaching and no one know what I'm going through. And one night I said, God, I can't preach like this no more. I said, I, I, said, I, I, need, I, need, I need you to touch, I need healing. Amen. And I didn't even know God healed back then. I just... I was a Baptist. <laughs> I didn't even know if God healed back then. But then I went to, I was invited to a Pentecostal church and I heard this message. And then I went back home after the message because they were talking about healing. And I said, Lord, is that true? And I went back home and I laid in my bed and I was crying. I said, God, I need help. I need help. Oh, God, I need help. I'm hurting so bad. I need help, God. And God said, get up and read your Bible. He spoke to me real strong, real firm. Get up and read your Bible. And I got up out of that bed. I jumped up and I ran to the door because I thought somebody was messing with me. Because I had five brothers, six sisters, you know, and, and I had a lot of friends around there. And I ran to the door because I thought someone was messing with me. But I looked out there and no one was there. And as I was headed back to my bed, I doubled back around and went to the window real fast, thought they might try to slip back, back up to the door, but there was no one there. And so as I was going back to the bed, I, I remember what was said to me, read your Bible. And so I set my ironing board up. I didn't have a desk at that time. 
I set my iron board up and I pulled a chair up to the iron board. I opened up my Bibles, put my Bibles up there with me. I put the Amplified Bible, my King James Bible, my Living Bible, Amen, and Matthew Henry Concordia. And I opened up, I opened up the Bible and I started reading from the book of Mark. And God showed himself strong on my behalf. You see, I know that he came to destroy the works of the devil. Because it was the works of the devil that tried to that tried to kill me early because of the ministry that God had called me to do. Amen. And so God not only healed me, but God delivered me from a lifestyle that was so uncommon to be a Christian. Amen. And then, friend, I started ministering that word. I started ministering about healing from that point on. And I've never stopped ministering along the line of healing. Why? Because I know, I know, I, don't, I know God's word works. I don't have to wonder about it. I don't have to think about it. I know God's word works. If I could just speak to someone that will that can come in agreement with the word and will come in agreement with, with the spirit of God that is flowing as I'm sharing the word, I believe that you will, that you are on your way up. I believe that that sickness, that disease that have gripped your body, it's been broken. You've been free from it. You've been delivered from it. Why? Because you came in agreement with the anointing. And you came in agreement with the word of God. Yeah. See, I'm just a man. But I know the word of God that delivered me. He's the same today as he was yesterday. He hasn't changed. He can deliver you too. Amen. My time is up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But I just want y'all to understand what God is doing, what God is saying. When we come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, amen, a dead, buried, and risen Savior, and when we make the decision that we're going to share it with our brother, with our sister, with our neighbor, amen, wherever we go, when we go shopping in the grocery store, and in the Walmart, and the Sam's Club, and in the Costco, and, and in the Home Depots and the Lowe's, amen, amen. Where, wherever you go in the restaurant and you and you start being a voice for the Lord, you're going to start experiencing more of the anointing, amen. And the same thing that is plaguing your body, you're going to have the opportunity to minister to someone that's going through the same thing that the devil tried to afflict you with, then all of a sudden, when you release that your faith on behalf of that person, that going through the same type of sickness you're going through, you're going to find out that your sickness you experience, and also God is touching you because you are reaching out to someone just like you that are suffering. And that same God that's going to touch them through you is going to reach back around and touch you because when you give, it is given back to you. When you give healing, healings come back to you. When you release your faith, faith is being back to you. Been, been reproduced in your heart. God is going to confirm his word. All you got to do is believe it and act upon it. Amen. God will do what he said he will do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, it's kind of hard to stop this thing this morning, but I'm going to stop anyway. <laughs> I, uh, this has been a good message today. Amen. It's been a good message today. And I believe that God is dealing with our hearts in a very powerful way because God wants to bring us all to the reality of, of, of his indwelling presence. Amen. And he wants us all to come to the point of repentance and turn our heart. See, you you supposed we supposed to be glory carriers. We supposed to carry that glory. Remember when Moses came off the mountainside? He carried the glory of God with him. And when he came down they couldn't look upon him until they covered his face. He carried the glory. See, we are supposed to be glory carriers. And if our life is not lining up, then you're not going to be a glory carrier. Amen. And if you're not being a glory carrier, what are you carrying? Amen. Be the one that God created you to be. Be that glory carrier. Carry. Let, the, let God... Do the work in you so that you can carry out the assignment that he placed in your heart. Don't let no devil steal 
the promise of God from your heart. The devil will use your loved ones. He will lose the one that you 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 you, you that you trust the most. Amen. Your own family. He will use your own family to make you feel insignificant. To make you feel like who are you who do you think you are? They will cause you if you listen to them, they will cause you to feel less than what God created you to be. And you're going to find yourself in a lot of pain and a lot of hurt because you paid attention to what they were saying to you. And because they don't want to participate, because they don't want to be a part, just, just say, just say okay, okay, no problem. Just go to your room. <laughs> like a little child. Just go to your room and I'm going to serve God if I have to serve God by myself. If I have to worship God, I'm going to worship God if I have to do it by myself. If I have to call upon his name and worship and praise him, I'm going to do it if I have to do it all by myself. Amen. If you choose not to, that's it's, it's, it's between you and him. But for me, I will serve the Lord. Amen. But for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. Because see, you are your own house. Amen. So think about it. Don't let yourself be discouraged because of what people are saying. And don't let the enemy bust your bubble. Make your bubble strong. <laughs> you are not busting. <laughs> and cause your, it caused your whole life to go up in a flash. Amen. <laughs> Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you, Lord God, that your word will not return void. We thank you, Father, that through it all, through it all, that we are overcomers. We overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And we thank you, Lord God, because we know that all things work together for good to them that love you and to those who are called according to your purpose. And Father, we give you all the praise. And all the glory, because it's in you that we live and move and have our being. God, we thank you. And we praise you. You are the Lord God Almighty. And there is none like you. There is none like you. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Website NyrebergMinistries.com. Amen. You can use your ATM card, your credit card, plant your seed of faith. Amen. Those are going to be, be sent in through the mail. You can send it to P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. Again, that's P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. Make a check payable to Library Ministries or New Life in Christ Jesus. Amen. God is working overtime. To bring us to a place where we will experience his glory before this year is out. God is going to do something in your life. Amen. Those of you that support this ministry on a regular basis, we believe in God for a great manifestation of the presence of God in your life before this year is out. We believe in God that people are going to be healed and set free. Amen. From cancer, from ligaments. Amen. We believe that God's going to heal the broken heart. Amen. Before this end of this year, we believe God is going to touch and going to set the captives free. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, as you give, give in faith. Believe in God 
for what you are standing in faith for. Name that seed. Name that seed. Put a name on to that seed that you're sowing tonight, today. Amen. And if you believe in God for healing, you believe in God for deliverance, what do you believe in God for? Put a name on that seed. Amen. And re release that seed. Release that seed in faith, knowing that God, believe that God has heard you, because when he has heard you, you know that you have the petition that he desired of you. Amen. God is not a man that he shall lie, nor the son of man that he shall repent. What God said, God will bring to pass. And I believe that God wants to do a work in your life before the end of this year. Amen. So you see, and let's believe God together. Let us come in agreement together. Amen. And let God do what he really do best. Amen. Because man can't stop God from doing what he want to do. No matter how they work overtime to try to stop it. God will do what he said he would do in his word. Father, we thank you right now. And as we prepare this offering, as we give our seed today, Father, we believe, Father, for signs, wonders, and miracles to accompany those who are naming that seed. We believe, Father, that deliverance is going to take place. We believe, Father, that healing is going to take place. We believe, Father, for restoration for families is going to take place. We believe, Father, in the name of Jesus, for finances to, to, to come into right position, in right place, in Jesus' name. More finances. We believe, Father, for bonuses, raises. We believe, God, for better jobs. For a job for those who have lost their job. For a job for those who are seeking for a better job. In the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord God, that today is a day of salvation. And we believe, Father, that all things do work together for good to them that love you. And for those who are called according to your purpose. So, Lord, let your kingdom come in the lives of those. And let your will be done in their hearts as well. And we thank you for it in advance. Oh, Korabasai. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We bind every itching ear right now that has not been itched by the Spirit of the living God. If the devil is trying to itch your ear, then in the name of Jesus, we rebuke that lying devil off of you right now. In Jesus' name. We release the faith of God. We release the peace of God. We release the will of God. We release the character of God right now to flow into your life, into your ministry, into your circumstances. Right now, in Jesus' name, glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. We say that it's done. We say that it's done in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Those of you that are here today, you never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life. Right now, I'm going to give you that opportunity. I'm going to give you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life right now. If you never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, if, this, if God spoke you through this message, and you know that he spoke to your heart, and you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, or maybe you one of those that, have, that, have, that you've been contemplating on coming to the Lord Jesus Christ for the very first time, and and for some reason or other, you just bagged out every time. But today, God has touched your heart. And you want to you want to acknowledge Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If that's you today, I want I want to pray with you right now, Amen. And 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 you that if you might be a backslider, you might be one that have turned your back on God, and and God has given you an opportunity to, to rededicate your life to Him right now. I'm talking to you right now as well, Amen. And as you say this prayer with me, believe in your heart that as you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ has forgiven you and that you are back in right standing with the Lord. Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit and renew me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died for my sin. Because I believe this and confess it with my mouth, Today, Jesus, I make you the Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me. Amen. If you said that simple prayer, right now I believe that Jesus Christ has made your heart his living room. And all things do work together for good to them that love God and for those who are called according to the purpose. We love you. Amen. If you're here tonight, 
this morning, excuse me, not tonight, but this morning, and you have a special prayer request right now, I pray for you. Anyone need prayer for you right, right now, I pray for you right now. Amen. You anoint the dope bulls. I got it. You need to come back to the Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God. There are certain situations that only by the power of your spirit can bring correction. Father, in the name of Jesus, we release the anointed now over her household. We bind every wicked and tormented spirit, Father, in the name of Jesus that are there. We bring it under subjection to the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. We loose every foul spirit from its assignment in the name of Jesus. And we release the divine will of God over this household and over these people. God, we ask you that you move in a supernatural way, bringing the peace that surpasses all understanding upon their hearts and their minds, that they will come to know the truth, that the truth shall make them free. And Father, we thank you for it in advance. And we say, Father, let grace and mercy prevail. I thank you for it right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Father, give this dear sister the strength to say what needs to be said and to take a stand when she needs to take a stand and to be bold when she needs to be bold. Father, I thank you for it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There, oh, my God. There it go. There, there it go right now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Holy boldness is falling on you right now. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Now declare what God has given you. Amen. 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 Glory to God. It shall be, it, it'll turn around, but you got to be strong. <laughs> yeah, you got to be strong. It, it'll work out. Amen. Anyone else? Okay, then let's pray for those that are with us by the internet. Father, we thank you for those that are with us by the internet right now. We thank you, Lord, that your hand continue to be extended toward them. We thank you, Father, for speaking to their hearts today, causing them to examine their own hearts, bringing them to a place of inner peace and comfort. God, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, Father... I release that anointing right now to lift burdens and destroy yokes in the name of Jesus. Burdens be lifted. Yokes be destroyed now because of the anointing. In Jesus' name, we love you. Don't forget to join us tonight here at 630. We're going to have a, a word of God that's going to bless your heart like never before. Amen. And I believe it's going to be a blessing to me as well because I'm looking forward to it. We love you. We'll see you tonight. God bless. Bye-bye.